Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Petey Orsky, the Toronto website developer. And this is the final video tutorial in the 10 part video tutorial series on the views module, in which we're going to look at a few add on uh, modules that integrate well with views, uh, that we can do some different and cool things. And we'll also recap the entire series just to uh, have a look at what we've learned and where we've come from. So uh, we're not going to spend much time on the actual development site here, but what we're going to look at is, um, like I said, the, the number of modules that I think integrate well with views that I've used on a number of different projects, uh, and I find myself consistently reusing. First one that we have is a schema view. So I did lie in that uh, I've never actually really used this, but after I posted the video tutorial series on the integration, or sorry, the video tutorial on the integration with the views API. I got a message from, and I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher this name, but Alki sent me a message and said, Pete, take a look at schema views. This provides you with a nice hook in to the schema module, which will actually define all of your fields and relationships and that kind of thing, uh, and save you from having to write it all out. So it's a pretty cool module. I would definitely highly recommend it if you're doing module development and you're going to be integrating your module with views. Um, and if you've used schema before, you'll be familiar with it, but if not, it's not too hard uh, to understand. You install schema, install this, go to the actual uh, schema path, and then when you click on the views tab, uh, you can take a look at uh, the integration between uh, your module and views, grab the code that it provides you and put that actually into your module. And I might be doing a video tutorial on that just to show people how that actually works uh, if there's any interest. So that's the first one I wanted to show you. But the second one that I want to show you, uh, I actually have a video tutorial on it. Um, hopefully you've seen it, but if not, uh, if we head over to drupal.org slash view slideshow, what this allows you to do is have a slideshow like I have on our TWD sandbox. So here you'll see on the front page, uh, I've got a number of different images and these images all rotate and that's actually provided by the view slideshow. Uh, and as I mentioned, I did a video tutorial, uh, well, two part series on this that's available at uh, this URL, uh, turnonwest.developer.com slash Drupal video tutorial slash creating Drupal 7 slideshow tutorial one of two. Uh, and then the second one, we show you how to kind of get rid of the numbers uh, and just do these funky little dots uh, down below here uh, to see how the uh, slideshow works. So that's the second um, module that I would want to draw your attention to. And you can get that at dribble.org slash project slash view slideshow. Uh, I got a lot of clients that usually contact me and ask me about uh, creating a slideshow. And I usually just save them the money and send them over to the video tutorial so they can do it themselves, to which most people are thankful. Another um, module that I'd like to draw your attention to that I've also done a video tutorial series on and it seems to be pretty popular is the uh, location module, but it's actually the GMAP module that integrates with views uh, and provides you with a map that you can place uh, geo information upon uh, so that you can uh, create like a store locator. Um, so the GMAP module is available over at project slash GMAP. Um, and what this does, it actually provides you with a um, a views plugin, right? So where we had unformatted as our selection or table as our selection, you can choose a GMAP uh, and then take your data and place that on a Google map. Uh, you'll obviously need a uh, Google API, so you want to um, register for that, get that, and you'll have to input it. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you'll want to have the location module enabled uh, and being used on your site. The last time I used this, it was still in a bit of flux, and so if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, it looks like there is a stable release. It's still 3.0, uh, and if you're not familiar with kind of what that means, you can read up on about here. Uh, it's a direct port. There are a couple issues, um, but again, there's documentation on it, um, and you'll see my video tutorial series, which I uh, which I provided. If we head back over here, we can. Uh, this will walk you through how to actually get this set up and create it on your own site. So it's a what I think is a pretty handy resource. Uh, it's got a lot of views, and a lot of people uh, seem to provide. Uh, uh, positive feedback on it. So that's the GMAP and location module. Other thing that we've got is the EVA module. And EVA is what I think to be one of the coolest modules in Drupal 7 uh, because it allows you to integrate uh, a views attachment with another piece of uh, Drupal content. So you can have a Drupal node and then the EVA module allows you to link a view into that and then pull in a bunch of information. So uh, I created a video tutorial on how to use this and what I did it for was a node registration system, so or event registration system. So you can create an event, have people register it, and then you can get a list of all the registrations. At least I 
think that's what the video tutorial was on. It's been quite a while. But uh, again, I'm tracking the you know the traffic to my site. A lot of people are coming just to see this Drupal 7 uh, node reference video tutorial. So I would uh, recommend you check it out. Uh, it was also based upon a uh, video tutorial series from Mustard Seed Media. Uh, Bob's pretty uh, pretty cool, and he talks about uh, this, but in the Drupal 6 context. Um, so that's the EVA module. Again, it's pretty powerful, uh, pretty neat, and you'll see down here, you know, there's 18,000 sites using it uh, with a reported close to 40,000 downloads. So that kind of tells you something about the module. Pretty neat. Uh, last couple modules I want to draw your attention to. Uh, I don't actually have tutorials on them. Uh, but there's a lot of documentation and they're pretty heavily used so I don't think you'd have a problem getting getting them started. First one is a calendar and uh, just like it sounds allows you to take date information uh, and actually put it into a nice calendar view. It's similar to the GMAP plugin in that it, it's a plugin that is provided to you so you choose calendar for your data and then it will uh, output that data specifically looking like a calendar. Um, Jay Carousel Pretty neat. This will take any list that you have and create a nice uh, carousel out of it. Created by Quick Sketch, so the guys over at Lullabot, um, Nate created that one, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's pretty powerful, and and I do have a lot of clients that like to have this. And it, you know, when we're doing our galleries uh, that we were doing in this video tutorial series, it would have been good uh, to look at the J carousel if we had you know time permitting uh, to have that as a kind of little navigation bar down at the bottom. But there, there is documentation on this, so I would recommend checking it out. You shouldn't have a problem getting used to it. Uh, if you do, drop me a line, and uh, maybe I'll do a video tutorial series on that one as well. Um, last one to look at, this builds on our tutorial 9, where we're looking at exporting data. You can actually use views, and I don't know if I copied that, views to export uh, you know, a ton of your data if you're looking to um, you know, export certain things from the database. So you can do that, use views to run the query, and then use the views data export to export into CSV, XML, and a couple other um, common formats. This is just powerful if you know maybe you're doing an e-commerce site, you have a you know a ton of orders, uh, you want to export some of that data, you can do that simply with this. Um, I haven't used it too much, but uh, I have used it once or twice, and I think it's a pretty pretty good module. Uh, but obviously there are a couple other modules that do similar things. Views bonus pack I've used before as well, which is also a good one that you might want to check out. Uh, so those are pretty much the modules that I wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, as I mentioned, I've got tutorials for about half of them. Uh, the other ones I don't, but if there's interest in that, just drop a comment and, and maybe we'll get that going. Now in terms of just concluding the video tutorial series, all I wanted to do was run you through just a brief recap of what we did. So, you know, if you're already familiar with it, you're comfortable, you watch the entire series, you can stop now and uh, we'll see you in the next video tutorial that I create. But if not, why don't we walk through and just solidify some of the comments or, or concepts that we that we walked through. So, in the first video tutorial, we looked at getting started. So that was just getting the module installed, looking at what the dependencies were with like Chaos Tool Suite whatnot. Uh, getting comfortable with the views UI and just creating a, a page of teasers. In the second video tutorial, we actually went ahead and started customizing that view. So that's where we looked at things like the titles, the view format, filter sorting. So uh, view format is kind of what we've been talking about here with GMAP offering uh, a different format and the calendar offering a different format. In the third video tutorial, we continued on and we looked at menus, permissions, headers, footers, and pagers. And so uh, in doing that, one of the more um, popular topics that we talked about in this video tutorial series was uh, the menu tabs. So looking at creating a view and creating tabs for those, and then on top of that, creating a sub-tab which actually filtered out different types of pictures that we had. Um, so a lot of interest was uh, kind of around that. Um, so hopefully you learned uh, you know, quite a bit there uh, and got an idea of how the menus actually work uh, in Drupal, especially with views. Then we looked at the headers and footers and kind of how to embed a view within a view. Uh, and then we finished off with a quick look at the uh, mini pagers uh, as well as full pagers, which is pretty straightforward. In video tutorial four, we started looking at blocks attachment, attachments and exposed filters. Uh, blocks are pretty straightforward as well. You know, they're a type of view that you can create and then place that block uh, just like any other block on your site. Uh, and so we did that and we specifically limited it to certain pages on our site. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, I would recommend going back to that because that's a pretty popular way to use views uh, with blocks. We also went ahead and created a views attachment, which is pretty powerful, but uh, not something that I hear too much about. Uh, so what we did is we actually had our regular view of all our pictures and then we used the views attachment just to show the most uh, recent picture that we had created on the site just to you know draw some attention to that. Uh, it's a good way in e-commerce to, to draw attention to your newest product. 
Um, and then we looked at exposed filters, which allowed users to specifically limit what type of pictures they wanted to see uh, on our development site. So they could look at Bailey, or they could look at Susie, or they could look at all of them. And that concluded tutorial four. And when we moved on to tutorial five, we started looking at theming views and kind of getting into the more technical concepts. So theming views is pretty cool in uh, views three and Drupal seven because you can actually uh, take the uh, the view itself and start adding some custom CSS uh, at the field level uh, from within the views UI. So that's pretty neat. You don't actually have to get into the theming system of Drupal, uh, which, you know, is good for beginners, uh, unless you want to get into the theming system. Um, and what I should mention is we went ahead and we actually created a copy of Bartik, so we had our own theme, so we weren't hacking up Drupal core, which is uh, something you definitely do not want to do. Um, but to conclude the video tutorial, we looked at custom TPL files for views and then how we could actually override those TPL files in the template.php using uh, specific function names. In tutorial six, we moved on to contextual filters and relationships. And so the contextual filters uh, and relationships are pretty neat and pretty powerful, but also a pretty complex uh, concept in views uh, and one that I had trouble getting my head around it. So I thought I'd spend some time on that. Um, what we did there, relationships, uh, we use that to pull in information and link two different tables together from the database. So if you remember, node was being used as our base table, so we could only get information from that base table. Uh, so as a result, if we tried to pull in information with the user, we could only get their user ID. We sidestep that by creating a relationship where we link the two tables together. Uh, and then, you know, this is really, uh, if you wanted to think about it in terms of SQL, uh, this is like our where clause, right? So we joined the node and the user table so we could pull in information from the user. We then looked at contextual filters, which are really just um, our where clause. I think I might have screwed up previously. Uh, we were talking about our from clause for relationship. Contextual filters are our where clause. Uh, and this is just a dynamic where clause. So um, by that, I mean, you know, if we're saying where the user is equal to some value, we can pull that some value in from the user that's logged in or from a user ID in the URL. And that's what we ended up doing was making sure that a user was looking at a certain profile page, and then we can pull in all the content that they had added to the site. Uh, and that concluded our look at relationships and contextual filters. And then we kind of got a little bit even more technical, if that was possible, and started looking at the Views API. Uh, and when we did that, we integrated a custom module uh, so that we could pull in the data from our database that was created by that custom module and use it in Views. The, the module didn't actually have any code uh, provided uh, Drupal with any type of functionality. We just pretended like it did, and then we actually made the changes in the database. So from there, we were able to link up our field sorting. Um, what was the other? Field sorting, filters, relationship, and arguments. Uh, went ahead and did that um, so that anyone using a custom module would then have the integration with views. In tutorial eight, we, we built off of that and looked at custom field handlers. And so this was the way that we were presenting our information uh, that we had linked up with the views API. Um, and so in doing so, we started looking at uh, classes and kind of object oriented programming, uh, or rather introducing the concepts and encouraging you to go check uh, some of those sources out, get a little bit more information because views is based upon object oriented programming. Uh, and so we were extending the views handler field to create a you know a custom handler that just returned the word blank um, if we didn't want to actually return the value uh, and that was up to you know a user creating a view and admittedly it wasn't the best example but it did show you how to create a custom handler and kind of get that off the ground. Lastly in tutorial 9 we covered pretty basic concepts of cloning, exporting and importing uh, and why you might be doing this so cloning obviously if you have a view that's kind of getting a little bit crazy uh, you know, maybe you're talking about two different types of data like users and nodes and you want to separate those, you can clone uh, and then change those two views around. So that's what we did in the video tutorial. And then looking at exporting, talked about the major reasons why you might want to do that. So one is obviously the uh, upgrades. Secondly was, you know, migrating from staging to actual live. And then the third, which we took a little bit more in-depth look into, was creating default implementations in your module for views so that when somebody enables your module they get a default view that comes with that so that's pretty cool um, something that you'll want to think about if you're doing any custom development and creating a module and releasing it back uh, it's always good to have integration with views because views is just so popular and it's going to be part of Drupal 8 which is pretty exciting um, lastly we just looked at importing views which is pretty simple you know you get the code uh, paste it in and you're ready to go in terms of the importation um, so that's pretty much the video tutorial series. I hope this was helpful. Uh, we got a lot of positive feedback on the video tutorial series and some people asking for some additional uh, concepts to be covered. So maybe time permitting, uh, I'll work those into the schedule. 
But uh, if this video has really helped you, please leave a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, always appreciate that. Uh, and know that I'll be releasing this for purchase just like the Ubercart series, so if you're interested in, in owning it, uh, look forward to that. Uh, I'll send that out and make sure everyone's well aware of it. So until the next video tutorial, take care and thanks again for watching.